welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Cyril Ramaphosa has appointed Jeff Khadebe as his energy minister. Terence Screamer joins me to talk about the change and what's in the minister's entry. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What does Khadebe's appointment signal? I think it signals that energy is high on the agenda and it's being taken seriously. Jeff Khadebe is the longest serving cabinet minister. And he's also coming out of the presidency where he's led the National Planning Commission for the last few years. That gives you sort of an overview of, uh, of what's happening in the country in terms of the disruption in certain sectors. And one of those is uh, definitely energy. And uh, that's been a big focus of the National Planning Commission. So you will have quite an intimate knowledge of some of the thing changes that are taking place as well as his deep policy background going back many years as head of the uh, policy in the African National Congress. So it shows a seriousness uh, from uh, Sir Ramaphosa around dealing with energy which has become something of an uncertain area, an area where there's been a fixation on, on nuclear energy and where other, other elements have been allowed to slip over the last, uh, over the last while. So I think um, also I think in terms of the the cabinet appointments that have been made, I think there's been some disappointment around some of the compromises. But if you look at the economic cluster in which I'd include energy, it's quite a formidable team um, from finance across to what's happened at public enterprise with the appointment of Prav Pravin Gordon. And if you add in Jeff Kadebi and his seniority, I think it bodes well for uh, taking the energy sector forward in a more serious way. What are the burning issues the new minister will have to deal with? I think the, the first message that he's going to have to send and the burning message for society is around nuclear because of this fixation of the, of the last few years. You know, as um, I think President Jacob Zuma's anxiety around the lack of progress on nuclear rose, we saw a succession of changes in the leadership at the Department of Energy. So we've had very, uh, a number of minister lack of stability there for a number of years. Uh, after a first term, it was fairly stable under Minister Paul Peters. We've just had a succession of ministers coming through there, and it's been quite destabilizing. And it's really been about nuclear. So I think the, the first message, uh, and it's a fairly easy one to make for the minister, um, is to say that nuclear is not on the uh, horizon. Uh, it's unaffordable. And he just has to repeat what has been said already by the president and by the finance minister there and just to nail that down because I think there is a lot of anxiety still around that program and I think that would be uh, an early first message but there are many burn burning platforms in energy and the central energy fund group of companies is a real problem. We've seen that the stocks, the fuel stocks were sold illegally and that investigation has been dragging now for many, many years. So uh, the minister will have to apply his mind uh, to that central energy fund group of companies. We've seen massive losses coming out of Petro SA and really sorting out uh, not only the strategy for those companies, but the governance. And uh, I think that that is a, a key priority. And then I think with the leadership volatility, there's no doubt that that's taken a toll on morale and the c capacity at the Department of Energy itself. So there needs to be a rebuilding phase um, that those are some of the sort of immediate, I'd say, burning priorities, but his intra is very full. What are the medium to long term priorities for the minister? I think I'm took, I capture this under medium term, but it's actually also probably a burning issue is the integrated resource plan. It's now very out of date. We're still working with the 2010 version. We were told by the previous um, energy minister that uh, there's been a, s a tweaking of the integrated resource plan by cabinet late last year. That still hasn't been gazetted, so we don't even know what that really looks like. And there's a lot of, uh, given what I said about nuclear uh, earlier, there's a lot of um, unhappiness about whether that program has forced nuclear into the equation when on affordability test, it probably should not have been there at all. So <coughs> that is a big priority to get a new um, credible integrated resource plan out uh, properly canvassed in society and amongst stakeholders and one that everyone can live, for, live with and where <coughs> policy adjustments are made to that uh, least cost model those need to be made transparently uh, and made clear and, and be uh, justified on the basis of costs and benefits so we aren't there yet and I think that needs to be, be dealt with 
We have got some breathing room given the surplus in uh, the electricity mix to do this properly. But I think we just have allowed this to slip now since 2010. It's now 2018. The plan that's on the table is totally out of date and has not taken account of the many changes that have happened in the world of electricity over the last few years. So that is, if not an immediate, I'd say a, a target for, the, for this, uh, what really is a year and a bit for this, this cabinet that needs to, <laughs> before the next uh, 2019 elections, they need to, uh, to, I think, sort that integrated resource plan out once and for all. And then commit to a regular updating in a techno-economic and a, a you know a techno-economic driven way, not a politically driven way. So that as things change and circumstances change around demand and supply, and uh, supply technology costs change, that is reflected in a regularly updated integrated resource plan. But over the medium term, <coughs> there's also you know the issue of disruption that's happening in the energy sector what things like electric mobility means for South Africa and our energy mix, and uh, what it could mean for, for instance for the liquid fuels uh, sector. You know, we're still sitting here with no clarity around cleaner fuels, and maybe that in some ways can be used as an opportunity if we are going to embrace an electrification of our, of our passenger uh, vehicle uh, fleet or more probably more immediately our, our public sector or our public passenger vehicle fleet in the sense of uh, public transport. Is it going to be more electrified? What does that mean for liquid fuels? I think we need to make some decisive decisions around that and we need to have an integrated view. And then <coughs> the whole issue around the end state of Eskom. I know that falls under uh, Minister Pravin Gordon's portfolio, but I think that the energy stakeholders deserve a voice on this. You know, Eskom has become a risk to the economy and its structure and end state needs to make, there needs to be decisions around that. What role should Eskom play in the future? Does it play the role of a vertical integra vertically integrated monopoly as is currently the case with all the risks that poses, not only in terms of uh, our fiscal balance, but also the risk it's, it's posing to, you know, a price path. The price path is now out of kilter with what we want to do on the productive sector. We want to build an industrialized economy, we want to have mining investment, and we want agriculture investment. These productive sectors rely on affordable electricity. We're out of whack here. We need to sort that out. And I think that uh, a priority should be given to engaging with the stakeholders so that uh, the voices are clear, the disruption that is taking a place in the electri electricity and energy sector globally is you know, part of the discussion rather than uh, what we've seen in the past, which has been really fixated on saving Eskom um, as, a, as, as a business as usual and building nuclear into the mix when both, I think, are now posing a massive risk. So there's a lot on uh, Minister Khadebe's plate and we hope that he'll be able to deliver. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.